do you know what are the literals in python do you know how to represent the integer float etc in all the number system inside python do you know how to use the format specifiers in c style within python stay tuned till the end of the video to know all the answers hey guys welcome back in today's episode we are going to discuss the below points first we will talk about various variables that exist within python and these are called as literals in python next we will talk about integer literals classification so we will talk about the different types of number system that can be represented within the python next we will talk about the specifiers for integer literals that is integer variables in python next we will talk about a set of examples for the integers and float using a python code and its output next we will go further and give some further examples for the integer and float using another example Finally, we will use an Python code example to understand how the C style formatting can be done for the format specifiers that can be used in Python for printing the output. That's the menu for today. Without any further delay, let's begin. Variables, also known as literals. So here we classify the literals in Python in four branches. The first one is integer. The next one is string. The next one is floating numbers and next one is imaginary. So these all four type of literals exist within Python. As you know, we call the floating number in programming language in mathematics book. We call it a real number. So both are same. This is just for your information before proceeding any further. So you know the basic classification of all the literals that is variables in Python. Now let us move forward to the next slide. Here we talk about the classification of integer literals that means our integer variables how they can be represented in various number system so first one is the decimal number system next one that is binary third one is octal and fourth one is hexadecimal in python we can write all these four type of number system using integers and we have proper representation to write and understand the different type of number system for integer within python so you will exemplify it don't worry and you will be easily correlating in case you have done the coding in verilog because in verilog we definitely use the binary as well as the octal as well as the hexadecimal apart from the decimal so in case you have done that or already have the knowledge of that so you will be able to correlate another thing is that in case you have not done we have an entire verilog playlist here we have explained this so please go ahead to the playlist page and find the verilog playlist so we are done here with the classification of integer among the various possible number systems within python now let's move on to the next slide integer literals specifiers so first we have non zero digit and how we write them we write like this one to nine and there could be many things and digit that means we are talking about any digit that starts with zero and goes up to nine next we have the decimal integer how we write them we have a non zero digit here that means this representation will come here and then there will be a underscore it may be there may not be there and there is a digit so this is the representation it, this is very simple for the basic integer next comes the binary here starts the interesting phase right the binary we know either 0 or 1 next we have binary integer how we write them that is 0 then we write small or capital b and then we have a underscore then we write the binary digit so this is very similar to the verilog I like how if i write i write 4 b then the binary numbers 1 0 1 one so this becomes a binary representation and here you can see that after this b there will be an underscore so here there will be an underscore so this is the representation of the binary in the similar fashion we can go ahead and write for the octal which is the next you know that octal starts from 0 to 7 the basic numbers in there 
and then we can write a octal integer starting from here there can be specifier right how much the width is there and then o then underscore there oct digit and here is the hexadecimal right and we have the digit then we have this it could be the digit right that means 0 to 9 then a to f and then a to f so this defines the hexadecimal number system and in python how we can write this and then this and then this and here goes the hexadecimal number so one striking difference here when i have wrote for the binary right i wrote 4b right so the 4 will not be there because here you can correlate right all the first initial digits are zero so even how much long this what i written that was okay with the verlog but here when you are writing right you will see that zero 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 should be there that means here instead of this this will be zero b right and then it will continue underscore one zero one one now this is true for all of the three that is binary octal and integer and if you place it right you will see a non-zero digit here so this is the difference between these three and the decimal integer here it will be a non zero digit where whereas here it will be a zero one so here it will be zero not four so this is a striking difference with the verilog now we must note here that python version 3.6 onwards why we are talking 3.6 because right now we are learning python 3 and it has some sub versions they starting from 3.1 up to 3.10 right now i think 3.10 point something is ongoing and for their underscores are now allowed for the grouping purpose in literal so this is one thing for grouping purpose we can use underscore in python obviously you have to use a python interpreter 3.6 and above right now whatever we are simulating in this particular series we are using python 3.8 or we are using the current python 3.10 as i have installed in last to last episode that is the episode previous to the last episode this is few things that you must know as a uh, a learner in python we are done here with this particular slide let's move on to the next slide integer and floating numbers now we first give you one set of examples here start our example first we have our python interpreter that is hashbang user pin python 3 and remember we are writing python 3 and not python although when we are talking we are talking it as a python but when we are writing we are using python 3 because python 3 the coding is different from python 2 here we write a variable width equal to 20 and here we check the multiplication of integers how the height is equal to 5 into 9 next we have the area area is what width into height so this and this multiplied so the multiplication of all of these will come right next we print the area so this area we can print and we have a type checker here so using the type function of area we can print the what type of data that we are storing within area division leads to the float this was multiplication right we if we do the division right we will face the floating number so here we have 50 minus 5 into 6 all divided by 4 and we print here the variable and also we do the type checking of the calculation now here we have not defined any of these variables as integer or float but due to the ongoing mathematics whatever we are doing that will make it a uh, integer or a float based on the type of mathematics that we are doing now before going any further to the example let's have the output so that you can relate so first one so forget the last two only we are talking here the first two because we have exemplified here only the first two because there are only four print command this is from the first print command that is print area that gives this output next we have the type checking so here it says the class integer now why we are talking class here because from birth python is a object oriented language and the integer type is defined as a class in the python so it is printing as class integer but seeing the int you will be able to understand that this variable contains integer values next as we proceed with the division here the next one gives the 5.0 right whatever we are dividing here and when we check the type of it it comes as the class float 
here we have the floating number representation and the variable is a float so this way we can check the value of a variable and the type of a variable that means the type of the value that is storing inside it and one thing for remember it doesn't has to go with the definition but it depends on the what type of mathematics we are operating here and that will lead to the type of the variable next we have again another code we start with hash bank python 3 and then we are using the to the power operator right you know say we start with number equal to 20 and then power equal to 3 then we use the final is equal to number then double star these operators we have already discussed in the last episode in case you have not watched it go to the playlist and see the last episode so this is the to the power operator and as we print this this comes as this this is the value and as we check the type it shows the type is integer so here you can see the type is integer next we use a function power instead of the basic operator that is here in that case we have the final as pow this is function then number and then to the power so this is the function pow that you have to first give the number and you have next you have to give its power to get the output to the power then we print it and as we print it we get this value next we do the type checking here and with this type checking the printout comes as the integer now you can see that you can use a variable very flexibly that means you don't have to declare it as a int or float and you can go ahead with your mathematical operation as you want and as a result what happens python automatically declares the type internally and to check the type you have to use the type command within the print state so this is very different from the c language and here we are done with this particular example let's move on to the next slide first we start here with our python interpreter here we have written the environment but i will suggest you to use directly the user bean python 3 but in case somewhere i have to demonstrate you that's why i have kept this but it is suggested that use directly the python binary Next, we use the classic division returns a float. First, we write the result is equal to 17 slash 3. So it's a classic division. And here we print the classic division, then result, then result. Next, we do the float division, which discard the fractional part. And as I show the output, you will be able to correlate what we are doing and what we are getting as an output. Now, this is the float division. So this is I have explained already in the operators episode in last episode and then we print it fractional that is result 2 so here you can just see the difference here it is 17 slash 3 and this is 17 double slash 3 if any automatical fractional part because this is auto managed by the python is coming that will be removed next the remainder of the division this is the modulo division that is 17 then percent then 3 so we do the modulo division here and as a result we get the remainder and here we print our remainder now as we run the code we get the output as this and here you can see this one keeps the classic division that means 5.666 so even if you are doing it in a handle calculator right this value will come but in case we want to discard this part we use the load division right this one and here you can see only 5 is coming and the rest of the value is discarded and next we have the modulo division to get the remainder so this is how you do the different division related mathematics in python and how you deal with the automatic assignment whether it is a floating point number or an integer with the python coding now we have this classic division and the fractional part which is discarded that is called the floor division in python so this is because the python automatically manages the output that means the type of the output whether it should be int or real so in that case you need a specific output you have to use a specific floor division here so here we are done let's move on to the next slide c style format specifiers now before going any further you remember that we use percentage s percentage d percentage f percentage e all these things in c language just to print the proper representation of integer float and etc etc 
earlier we are just printing the variable and we are not giving any specifier but in python we can still use the c style format specifiers and how we go with this example the first line is our python interpreter that is hash bang user bin python 3 in your system this could be a slightly different you have to go and type which python 3 in case you are in linux in case you are in windows you will run directly as i have shown you in the episode of installation and using the python interpreter and the genie g why? that is genie gui so the next line is we have the name of our channel take simplified tv and next we have then sub is the subscriber is 5000 and then this tutorial is python for vlsi and we have views is equal to 2.5 next we type the print then let's talk about percentage s and then we have a modulo symbol here that is the percentage symbol and name and we have percentage d subscriber and percentage f lakh viewers and here we have percentage and then we have a bracket so please watch this carefully in case more than one that case we can take the percentage common out of the first bracket right and all the variables will go here within the first bracket or the pair of braces now as we proceed we give the another print command you are watching percentage s that is this tutorial as we run the code what we get the output here is our output let's talk about tech simplified tv we have 5000 subscribers and we have 2.5 lakh views so in case you have to give the exact number of views you can specify it so here you can see views we have written as float and the output is coming as float right as we write percentage f and here we are writing is percentage d here for 5000 it is coming as 5000 and for this it is coming as this and we are giving the variable values here and here and here this is a string so percentage s is giving this output and finally when you are using this percentage s this gives the value this python for vlsi this which was originally stored in this particular variable which is we have used here in this way you can use all the c format specifier and in case you are using a single variable you have to use this fashion and you are using multiple variables in the print statement you have to use this fashion to write the variables and this is very similar to the printf which we have used in the c programming language and here you can see we have got the c style format specifier and the outputs so this is for the printing output of your python code in the terminal so here we are done with the usage example of the c style format specifier in python let's move on to the next slide thank you very much for watching up to this point and don't forget to like share and subscribe in case you have some dislikes put that as in words in the comment section down below and bye for today